Welcome to Dare to Dream. This is Debbie Dashinger, and you're going to be fascinated by today's show. This is a gentleman whose work with a coma patient tells how he was able to cure a rare disease. He was featured in the book, The Perfect Predator. I'll tell you more about him in a little bit. And I want to thank the sponsors for this show, Dr. Dane here and Access Consciousness. They do exquisite energy work all around the world, workshops, products, learn to be a facilitator, learn how to do energy work yourself and make some money. You can visit them anywhere in the world at Dr. Dane here, H-E-E-R dot com or accessconsciousness.com. Dare to Dream podcast has been nominated for two People's Choice Podcast Awards and a Webby Award. Dare to Dream is ranked in the top 100 best podcasts in the USA in self-improvement on Apple Podcasts and ranks consistently in the top 50 podcasts in several countries around the world, including Portugal, Canada, and France. As I said, you'll be fascinated by his work. My guest is Robert Lindsay Milne who was reading tea leaves before he could speak English. Robert has traveled the world, giving insight with his psychic intuitive sessions to tens of thousands of people. The Toronto native had humble beginnings as the 19-year-old hippie psychic working at a tea house. And Robert grew to be recognized across the continent as one of the most insightful psychic intuitive counselors of his time. For more information on Robert, go to rlmreadsu.com. Welcome to Dare to Dream. This is Debbie Dashinger, and I am a media visibility coach out into the world. The show has been around for 13 years. It's award-winning. And what I do as a master coach is I show you how to write a page turner book. I've got private sessions available, not many left right now, but there are a few, as well as an ongoing group membership where I show up live twice on Zoom with people all around the world and help them to write a page turner book. I also have a company that takes authors to a guaranteed international bestseller status. And I run the ultimate visibility formula that shows you how to be interviewed on radio and podcasts and get excellent results. Fill your workshops, sell your books, have your tribe and community find you and more. You can go to debbie-inger.com or if you would like to get your free templates and your tools, go there as well. Just sign up and I will auto free mail you how to find out what your message is out into the world, make it into a really compelling and easy sentence to say. That's debbie-inger.com, D-A-C-H-I-N-G-E-R.com. And I welcome Robert Lindsay Milne to the show. And Robert, it is so great to have you here. Thank you. It is equally great to be here. Thank you. I was reading up on your name, yes. Milne, which is spelled M-I-L-N-E, and it yeah. says it's Gaelic for mill? Does it could be, um, or miller, someone that would work in a mill. Um, that, that's certain, except for where that came from, my great-grandfather was a sailor. He, he worked on, um, on ships um, in the 1800s. How interesting. Do you know, so he was a sailor. That was his job title? He worked on, he, he worked on, um, uh, um, uh, the, the, uh, um, uh, transport vessels. He, he wasn't in the British Navy. He was a merchant Marine, a, a merchant Marine, in the merchant Marine Navy. Um, that, that's what he did. And he was too old to go to war in the first world war. But in the second world war, my great grandfather went to war and he, he sailed on a, on a merchant ship and it, it was sunk in the middle of the Atlantic. He was the only, by the way, he was 83. And he was the only, he was the only survivor. They found him out in the middle of the Atlantic holding on to a board. Yeah. For how long? Um, only a few hours, but the ship had been totally sunk and he, he was the only one that, that survived. 
so how exhausting. Wow, this is a yeah. man who was meant to be around, I think. Yes, it That's runs in the bloodline, yes. And speaking of bloodlines, so of course, A.A. A. Milne came to mind, the gentleman who wrote Winnie the Pooh, Christopher Robin. Is there any connection between you two? Probably um, a second or third cousin once removed or something. The, he, most Milnes, is, it's not a common name, so mo most of us are related somewhere back there. Very cool. But, there was one time in Toronto, I remember my grandfather said, because I'm in Toronto, uh, my grandfather saying that every Milne in the phone book were, was related, but hmm. that was a long, long time ago. Okay. So. Well, it'd be so great to get on that. There's a show on um, here in the US PBS where there's a, a Dr. Gates from Harvard who takes these blood samples and cheek swabs and comes back and tells people all the way from the inception of time. Wow. Where their tribe is connected and sometimes some really notable facts about their lineage. And I've, I've always been a little bit bummed that it was only for celebrities because I would love to have it done. It's, it's way beyond ancestry.com or anything like yep. that, how deep they go. So it would be interesting, but here you are, right. well gifted. And I would love to know, um, and before we started, you said to me, you've been doing this for decades. I was 15 and a half yeah. when I started doing readings. It got me off the streets of Toronto. That's how I got off the street. Because you were on the streets? I was, I was, I was um, a, a homeless teenager for a while. Really? Yeah. And now I have always been a psychic or been psychic. So I've, I've always been aware of, of what's going on. I've always been intuitive and I've always survived by my intuition. And when I was uh, homeless as a child or as a teenager, I again survived by my intuition and psychic ability. Uh, and it was a testing ground for me. And, and often I'd be in a situation where I could solve a problem either using my intuition or psychic abilities or an illegal or an immoral way to do it. There's no right or wrong in those situations, but based on the decisions I made, led me in a direction. Most of the time, most of the time I chose to go by instinct and, and intuition and psychic ability. And then I heard, if you could do readings and you worked at the cozy tea room in Toronto, you would get paid at the end of the day and you'd get a sandwich and a cup of tea. And I applied at the cozy tea room. Did By the way, I couldn't do tea leaf readings. Um, I applied at the cozy tea room, did a <laughs> reading and got hired. And that day I got paid in cash, had a sandwich and a cup of tea and cookies and got to come back to work the next day. Mm. So you were, were you hired to read tea leaves, but instead you were using your psychic ability and nobody knew? That's correct. In Canada, up until just recently, it was against the law. It was section 323 of the Canadian, sorry, 326 of the Canadian Criminal Code. And it, it was called the Anti-Witchcraft Act. And it came, and, and it was, it was- um, How antiquated is that? That's well, like- from another timeline. I don't even understand. Well, it was enacted in the late 1800s. It stayed on the books right up until our current prime minister um, in 2018, he legalized marijuana and fortune telling. So, <laughs> marijuana <laughs> and witchcraft. <laughs> right, so, so the anti-witchcraft law uh, oh. act says, Anyone who fraudulently, which, which, which and, and it was assumed anytime you did something like this was fraudulent. Wow. Four subsections. One, tell fortunes for a consideration. Um, accuse somebody of a crime using an occult or crafty science. Claim to heal somebody using an occult or crafty science. And I can't remember the fourth, uh, by the way, and, and, uh, and, and punishable by summary conviction and not more than one year in jail and not more than $5,000. Wow. So at the tea room, what they did is they sold 
tea leaf tea and sandwiches and the readings were for entertainment only. Hmm. And that was put on a sign. All readings are for entertainment only. So that's, but everybody got a tea ring, reading or tea leaf reading. I couldn't, I, 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 I've never used a medium per se. So what I did is I would just hold the teacup in front of me and I would look at the person and speak. And I was a kind of flamboyant kid. So I tell, just, you know, I see the blobs in the tea leaves and the teacup <laughs> and I would tell them stories about that, but I would always incorporate it. And the same with cards. And in those days it was $2 and 50 cents. Uh, the tea room gets a buck and a half and the reader gets a dollar. Oh, that ate my guts out for a pretty long time. And it really, well, it really bothered me that, that um, these people that had no talent mm. were making more money right. off my people. Mm. And that has gone on and it still goes on. So, so that's, been, that's been something that really, really bothered me. So people that had no talent in this, this area sold our skills and made more. And if it wasn't for us, they wouldn't make any money. So as far as, and I, I understand this may be just pertinent to you, but what is a good way to ask a question? So somebody comes, let's say they book a session with you, they hear you on this show and they reach out to your website and they book a, a, a session with you. Is there a best way to ask you a question for the best result or what sure. kind of questions might someone ask? All right, so um, when I do readings that, that are like my, my in-person or, or video readings are, um, an hour long, actually they get longer now because I just love doing them, but, but um, I, they're, they're an hour long and they're primarily a monologue. So I want to know two things about the person, how old you are, what month is your next birthday, and then be quiet. Wow. And then, and then I just start. And I even tell people, if you, even if you think I've made a mistake, don't correct me because I'm constantly correcting. When I do a reading, it, it's like painting a picture. Oh. So, so I, I, I put the different pieces together and I'm constantly going over in my mind what I've already said. So I know relatively quickly if I've been a bit off or, or I've said something incorrectly. I, I know by the way it feels. You, you know, like I've been doing this since like, what, 55 years now, and more than 100,000 psychic connections. And I am I understand what it feels like to be right, but I especially know what it feels like to be wrong. Hmm. And so I'm constantly sensing the energy, and if I've been off, I correct it myself. And then I just simply talk about that person, their life, and, and I, I um, at first, I talk about how good their life is going to be shortly. See, most people that come to me, they're in trouble. You know, usually somebody doesn't go walking down the street and say, let's go get a reading. You know, usually people that, that come to me are looking for answers, looking for information. Um, and I almost never lie. I almost always tell the truth. There's been a couple of the times where I have um, been- That makes sense. You mean like if, if you see, oh my gosh, this person's gonna die or someone they love very much is gonna die or they're gonna be a tragic accident. Is that something you might withhold? No, I would tell them. Wow. You see, most things are, there are very few things that are actually destined. Hmm. I love it. I agree. Destiny. Yeah. Destiny is determined. Just about everything in our life is is choices. Right. Um, destiny cannot be changed. So usually, what will happen is it can't be seen, hmm. because if it can be seen, it can be changed. That's interesting. All right. So there. Um, so if so, when I see something, it's my moral obligation 
to tell you what I see so that you can choose if you want to go through that experience. And you had a really interesting experience with a coma patient. I was curious how that came about commute for you to communicate with somebody who's actually in another realm in consciousness. How did you work with a coma patient? Well, I had a mental, a psychic connection with him. Now, I knew the patient. I also knew his wife. And um, it, it, I, I, I'm, it's, been a, it, it's in a book that, that, that they wrote. It, it, the book is called The Perfect Predator. I, I'm not the star. Um, um, the, the woman that wrote the book, the, the, the patient's husband, is, is a client I've had for 25 or 30 years. And she is a um, professor of epidemiology at, at a Southern California university. Hmm. And she's also happens to be associate dean or assistant dean of, of epidemiology. And her husband, Tom, is, is a uh, professor of psychology at the same university. And he also is an associate dean at the same university. They have been my clients for a pretty long time. So I've done readings for them, more for Stephanie. And, and her name is Strathy because it's in the book. I'm not, you know, like betraying any confidences. And Tom um, had a few less, but, but um, they had readings. Two years before I told Tom that, that he had a really serious problem coming up. And I, and I, was, and I was really brutal with him. I was blunt about it. And, and he had ballooned up to over 300 pounds. And, and, and I said to him, by the time you are at, and I gave him an age, you will have lost more than 100 pounds. This is how I presented it to him, by the way. By the time you are at such and such an age, you will have lost 100 pounds or more. Or more. Um, before what I'm seeing, you're also, um, looks like you're gonna be really sick and you will be as close to dying as you could get and not die. However, the illness comes before the weight loss. I'm wondering if the weight loss is the inevitable outcome. And if that's the case, then you can choose, maybe I've scared the hell out of you now, maybe, then you'll take what I'm saying seriously, lose the extra hundred and miss the illness or go through the illness and lose the hundred. And, and I just said to him, basically, Tom, it's up to you. Oh. You can do it the hard way mm. or you can do it the easy way, but you are going to survive. So Tom and, St and, and Stephanie were away on a dream vacation. They were in Egypt. Tom came down, with, and by the way, he hadn't lost weight. Tom came caught um, some kind of virus and then succumbed to, or she came to, whatever the word is, um, to the um, most powerful superbug on the planet that was 100% antibiotic resistant. Wow basically the guy was going to die mm -hmm. and there was no cure he was in isolation in uh germany he was because uh, he had been hazmat or yeah flown out of um uh, egypt and he was in germany isolation doctors were around him in, in hazmat suits and they just basically said he died stephanie is the leading researcher in in um aids and aids research and she's quite well known and um she decided that she was going to find the cure for her husband before he died and she found it wow how she found it uh well she um her and a whole bunch of other researchers around the world got together and um and it was a worldwide project and they had the psychic working with them as well. And I had meetings with Stephanie every single day. Mm -hmm. And I had a mental link with Tom. Mm -hmm. I knew what his emotional 
and spiritual and mental state was. And I knew, and I, I was down to the last one, um, I knew that Tom would live. And I knew because I saw his life force energy. Mm. It looked like a candle. Mm. So when the candle light, the flame was strong, that was his life force. I knew he would live. And then there were a few times when, his, um, when the flame started to flicker and was about to go out. And I knew what he needed, uh, emotionally, mentally, spiritually. Mm. So he same. was in touch. So that's interesting to me because I, although they say that coma patients can hear, still I was always under the assumption that there was also an enormous disconnect. They were someplace much happier than being in their body. And so- Well, they, they, they still are in their body when they're alive. He was in his body. Mm. So, so, and he had an awareness that something was wrong, bad, that he was sick. He didn't know what it was, but he had that awareness. Mm. There was one, and, and I'm not a medical person and didn't get too much involved with the medical part. However, I also was about three days ahead of the doctors Amazing. because I knew when his, it wasn't that I knew that his vital signs, what the numbers were, what I knew were the vital signs changed. Okay. Okay. I, I, I didn't know what the numbers were and I didn't know what it meant. I just knew vital signs changed and his energy was different. Hmm. And I would describe things like that. And then I was describing what was going on in his body, not as a doctor, but as somebody visualizing an infection in a certain part. And it was red or, 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 or black or, or purple or, or, or pink. We wanted pink, right? Um, and and um, I, I was aware of all those things. And I was often about three days ahead of the doctors. But what also was really interesting, oh, and by the way, I, um, Stephanie gave me a report of what I had done the day before. She, she has a, um, a, a photograph, photogenic memory like, like Sheldon Cooper. Mm -hmm. so, so she can remember everything. And every day she went through what I had said the day before or the day before that. So I was getting critiqued or, or I was getting the feedback and, and, and that was one of the most incredible lessons, like, like in such a serious thing and getting feedback every day. Fortunately, it was the positive side. Of, you know, it would be awful. Was, yeah, you were wrong in that one. That one's wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, it would be, but <laughs> so. And what about Tom? Well, so when Tom finally made it back, to this side and out uh, of the coma uh, he fully. still was in well he still was in a coma when he came back to california and he was treated with something called phages and stephanie found them i had to help with her finding them she came up with three different possibilities and she presented the three things to me and she told me phages and she described what they were and i said that, that, never, that that's the one. She said, well, let me tell you about the other two. And I said, no, that's the one. Mm -hmm. and, I said, and she said, let me tell you. And I said, this is the one. So she told me about the other two. And I said, the first one, phages, that one. And now I, she didn't do it on my say so. Like I was not the only one. There were several people. But her final decision was when I described to her what the phages would do was what made her decide. And I said, oh, they look like little Pac-Man that are going to go after the superbug and eat it, which is exactly what it did. By the way, phages are excrement. Really? Yeah, that's right. And Tom, uh, it was taken, it, it, depending on the it, it, it comes from, uh, yeah, they just get like reaching a toilet, but I, it, it comes from, they, they, it, it comes from sewer water, but it's specifically, um, it's specifically excrement. And how do they put it in a human body? It was, well, there's been research on that. Um, actually in the 1920s and 30s, um, Russia were doing experiments with people that had, lower in um, organ 
um, illnesses like in, in, in bowel and, and intestines. And they were injecting uh, raw excrement right, right into people's bodies. And the thought was the healthy bio bacteria would attack and eat the um, uh, unhealthy bacteria. They were getting some successes with that process. And then penicillin got invented. So, you know, you put like curds in somebody's body or a pill. Let's go for the pill, right? So, <laughs> so, so, um, <laughs> so um, there's been research since because of all the superbugs. Yeah. And the American Army was involved, the American Navy is involved, was in research. There were several companies around the world that have been doing research but no human testing. Mm. And then the story is how they got there. You know, it, it all approved. And they, it, it isn't raw sewage anymore. They sterilize the, the, the bacteria. They sterilize the phages. And then they alter its DNA to attack a, sp a specific virus or a specific bug. Cool. And then it was injected right into his um, veins. And they didn't know whether it was going to kill him or not. But he also was at the point where if they didn't do something or if they did something, he was going to die anyway. He was like that close. And he was injected and he, and he, and he, and he lived. And, and, and um, the superbug was, was, was um, um, destroyed. There was a couple of times, and you were saying, well, how do I know these things? There was a couple of times where when, when, when Tom was in Germany, um, he didn't understand where he was. Mm. He was in the dark, mm. literally in the dark. He, he'd only been around people in hazmat suits. And he was cold and he was starting to let go. The flame was flickering and, and I knew. And at that time, Stephanie said they were asking, should Tom's daughter come and visit? And, 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 and I said to, and this is in Germany, they're in Germany and the, you know, the girls are in California. And, and I, I, I said to Stephanie, yesterday would have been a really good day. Today is good. Tomorrow's okay. And if you wait longer than that, don't bother. That night they appeared. And that night, Tom's vital signs change. In the book, The Perfect Predator, when he's talking about being in a coma, he remembers how cold and lonely and empty he was, and he was just about to let go, and then his daughters appeared. Mm. So not only was I connecting with him, he survived. And because they'll often say, oh, well, how do you know you're talking to somebody who's unconscious? Well, if they die, you don't know. Well, Tom lived, and he came back to talk about that. He survived to talk about it. <clears throat> This is amazing. And so I'm curious if there are verified conversations and connections you had. So perhaps you told Stephanie something that happened one day. And then when Tom was fully recovered, he was able to remember without you prompting something exactly the same, but from his end. Well, I didn't have any direct conversations with Tom. Until, until he was actually out of the hospital mm. and, and conscious. That was like several months later. So um, I said to him the first time, when, first time I saw him, so I said, hey, Tom, I know an easier way to, to lose 100 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> and of course we laughed, you know, <laughs> you know. <laughs> he looks slender. I've seen his, his pictures with Stephanie. He looks quite slender. So I'm assuming well, that, that's because that, he lost 100 pounds. That, that's how come it happened. Amazing. Hmm. And so yes. it, I, and I am working with a young woman now. Yeah. Um, young. Um, this woman's name, her name is Antonetta. Mm -hmm. And Antonetta has fourth stage cancer. Mm -hmm. And and all our listeners, your listeners, when you hear of Antonetta, would would you please send healing vibes to her? She's mm -hmm. a beautiful, beautiful being, and she can live too. Anyway, um, uh, Antonetta is someone that I work with. I've always had someone that I've been working with on a on a mental level um, 
as, as well as doing readings. I, I've never talked about it before because I, I, um, I'm kind of scared of medical things. Mm. But my job isn't giving um, medical healing with them. My job is to take care of the emotional, mental, spiritual part. That's with these sick people. Then, then my biggest practice is, is, is being intuitive and doing readings. And my specialty is dealing with um, traumas, um, crises type in, interventions. That's, that's the, the type of work I do. And then I'm everyday reader too. I do readings too, just like, you know, I live a boring everyday kind of psychic. But astrology life. as well. Do you have any interest in that? No, I don't, I don't use a medium. So when I ask somebody, how old are you now? Mm. What I'm doing is looking for where you are in time. Hmm, that's interesting. All right. And then, about that. What do you mean by where you are in time? That's where I find you, where, where you are, where we... So when I do a reading for someone, I start off with saying, um, you know, this is Friday, August... Uh, how's the date today? August, um, what, 27th or something? All right, I'm August 27th, 2020. Psychic reading for Mary Smith by Robert Lindsay Milne in Toronto. So I give the date. And then when I then stop and stop the recording and then say uh, two things, how old are you? And what month is your next birthday? Then I turn the recording back on and I say, here we are today in August, 2020. And then I start and I measure people's years from birthday to birthday, not from January to December. And in my work, I go forward and backward in time several times in everybody's readings. I, st I, I see people at the time of conception, and I also see the time of completion. And I go back and forth. And so I need to have a, an anchor to let me know what, what year I'm in, in reality. So that's why I ask those questions. Or it's a crush. Have you yourself, um, it sounds like the inception of your life had some elements of struggle to it if you ended up on the streets. But what about once you superseded that, you work at the tea house from there? I mean, I know that's a- oh, Five or six yeah. years. Yeah, did you, did you have years of struggle being a psychic that you had to overcome? But personally, like, like personal issues, like, like, like being traumatized and stuff as an individual, absolutely. Did I have trouble as a psychic? Uh, no. One of the things that has been very special for me is my awareness or psychic ability has almost always been there. And from the time of, I can remember, I saw things, said things, got hit for some things I said, and I never understood why. Um, Uncle Harold, that wasn't Aunt Mary that you were with. Who was that woman? You know, shut up, kid, you know? That kind of stuff. I didn't know. Um, so, so I, but I've never had a problem. Uh, okay, so yeah, I've gone through dry periods, and but but over, over my, you know, like fifty plus year career, I've always been able to do it, mm -hmm. and it's because of discipline and commitment. I've never had a problem psychically. I've had psychic injuries. But, but never, never um, problems developing psychically. Was there ever a difficult choice that you had to make to fulfill your destiny doing this? Wow, that's a brilliant question. Yeah, there's been a couple of times um, doing, from where I see things, doing my work, it, it, it takes a, a special kind of way of thinking. I'm hardwired to look at a situation and, and think my first reaction is, what can I do? What can I give? And my second thought is, what can I get? Well, that, that hasn't always worked out so well for me. <laughs> but but uh, so, so my first reaction is, what can I give? What, what can I do? Um, there have been times where I've made life and choice 
life and death decisions and in doing my work. Um, I, more than I can remember, actually. Wow. Um, however, um, there was one time I, I had a contract with um, South African Broadcasting just after apartheid ended. And the first year, that I, the first tour, we, I, we did the, the whole country, all the big um, radio and TV stations. And I was on a show called The Felicia Show, which was the African equivalent of Oprah. And this woman was really powerful. And, 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 and I told her that I, there isn't anything that you can say or do that's going to upset me. And I'll do much, just about anything except no exploiting blood and guts and gore. Um, I, it, it, I, I'm just not going to do that. Other than that, we can cover anything. A woman came up to the microphone for me to do a reading for and her 11 year old daughter. Now we're talking about deepest, darkest Africa. We're not talking about the streets of America or the streets of Canada. We're, 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 we're talking about the wilderness and, and um, people get killed easily and children do. And I saw this woman standing at the microphone and I looked um, at Felicia and I said, not her. And um, just as I said that to her, we then went to a commercial break. I got up and walked off the set for a couple of minutes, got a drink of water. I came back and sat down and guess what? That woman was still there. We come back from back to live on the air in front of all of South Africa. Um, the woman asks a question and she says, my daughter disappeared, didn't come home, 11 year old child. And I saw what happened yeah. to that child. I teach people that I, 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 I teach people energy that comes through you is not yours. So when it comes through, say it, release it. Because if you don't, it's going to hurt you. Right. Like in the movie, The Green Mile. Mm -hmm. Remember that? And the big giant John Coffey, he would suck the energy out of people or the evilness, and then he would release it and then go to sleep. Mm -hmm. And then the time that he was holding the energy in, this big giant got really sick and weak. Mm -hmm. That's the same as what it's like when energy comes through us, mm -hmm. only not like in the movies. But when you hold that in, it hurts you. And there I was on live TV, and I saw this woman's child that had been mutilated. Yes. And I chose, Sorry. I chose to hold it in and not say it. And it made me very sick mm -hmm. for a really long time. That's what came through. That's what came into my mind when you said, is there anything? Um, every part of my life has led me to do what I do. Um, so is there one moment of destiny? Well, perhaps meeting you. But, but uh, you know, um, but by the way, um, I, as I said, I stopped doing shows several years ago. And I just started coming back to do it again. Because I, I'm starting to love it again. So, you know, I wasn't being quite as flirtatious as it seemed. You know, your, your show is the biggest one that I've been on that I can remember in years. So, you know, this is a moment of destiny. Mm. It just, beautiful. right? Well, you have to wait like six months to get on your show. Right. <laughs> right? Well, it's only taken me a couple of days. It, I know. So There's, that's a yeah. mojo manifestation, right? right. That's just that's right. a big name at a reschedule. And here we are. I agree. That's right. I feel that's destiny. That's right. That's right. And so I'm going to put you on the spot and you can say yay or nay. And I respect either way because this is. Wait, 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 wait. 
I, I bet I'm going to say yes, but <laughs> good. I felt that already. I, I intuited that already. Um, I actually, by the way, already knew what happened to this young girl's, this young girl when you even started the story. So I need to like sort of. I, 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 watched, your, I watched your energy change. Yeah, I knew. I watched it happen. Yeah, you know? that was. And by was, the way, I, I really have to be honest is, is that we did discuss um, off the air before we started that. Right. Well, we haven't even told the people that I'm going to tune into a reading for you, but yeah. we were implying that, right? Yes. Okay. We were, we were you and I. But you and I discussed it before we went on the air. Very, very briefly. I want people to be That's clear right. who have not had right. weeks or even days. No. This was literally minutes before the show began. I just said, oh, by the way, would you be willing? Because I always feel like for listeners and viewers, it just bumps things up when they have a visceral experience of you and your gifts. So, you I know. I like to think of it as talents. <laughs> okay. Rather than gifts. Gifts come for free. Um, by the time I was about 21, I'd been doing readings for five or six years. At the tea room, I worked five days, sometimes six days a week, and sometimes seven from the time I was a, you know, mid 15 year old kid. Some days I saw 10 people, some days I saw 40. Wow. And that went on every day over and over and over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. So by the time I was about 21, um, I was, I, I'd seen several thousand people. Um, and, and, and I was pretty skilled at, at that point. Mm. Um, what was the point? Of, uh, maybe I was just bragging. Um, oh yes, I know what I was saying. Okay, so right around, when I was about 21, I knew for sure I, I was gonna do this. And I decided that if I was gonna do this, I made a vow that I would do at least one psychic reading or practice being psychic every day of my life, no matter what. Yeah. And, and I did that for over 30 years without missing a day. Wow. The reason I chose to miss a day was because I wanted to know what it was like not to do it. <laughs> you know, I wanted to know that well, what's it like not doing, what's it like not doing psychic readings? That, that was the reason. So, so um, I've been dedicated to improving my ability. Even now today, as I'm, you know, I'm 71, even now today, because I work full time, um, maybe not seven days a week, but I, I see clients and I do readings. Um, every month, I look at some of the readings that I've done and I watch them or I listen to them and I assess how I've given the information. I, I assess how I'm um, dealing with the person I've, and I make sure that I'm not falling into patterns or routines or easy hits. You know, it's nice that we all have them, you know, and, and, and I do my best to, to stay away from the easy, the easy hits. Uh, and, and, I'm constantly finding different ways of saying similar things. Like at my stage, you know, when I've done more than 100,000 psychic sessions, how many bad marriages do you think I've seen? Well, considering the statistics out there, I assume right. it's greater than 50%. <laughs> right. So how many times do you think I've said to somebody um, about something about their unfulfilled or unhappy relationship mm. now times, yeah then you probably would like so what i have to be aware of is i might have said it or seen it 50 60 70 000 times i'm saying it to that person for the first time yeah and i have to make sure that i feel it as deeply and as fully as I possibly can, even though I've seen it 10,000 times. I really appreciate that so much. I've actually never heard a psychic say that. And I, I concur. I get it. I have been on air or podcast for over 13 years. And I still, to this day, listen back, not all, keeping it real, not all after 13 years, but I would say 90 something percent of the shows 
I go back and watch and listen to because I'm constantly learning so much, wow. obviously relearning from my guest as well as the kind of job I'm doing, how I'm showing up, how I'm connecting, how the conversation That's goes. Right. It's important. It's huge. Absolutely. And I, it's very informative, I think. So that I decided that if I was going to do this, mm -hmm. I had to be committed and dedicated. And I've made it my, my life commitment. That's cool. It's, yeah. So one of the things that's going to be happening around your place is either some kind of renovation or some kind of um, <laughs> some kind of reconstruction or or a new building in and around your your home. What it just simply looks like is it, it looks like brighter, um, happier, more fulfilled, and it, the energy is clearer um, from whatever was happening about what 2017. 20, 20, 2016. Uh, so, so that was a time of a lot of inner, see how I just kind of slid in there like that, you know? Um, so 2016, 2017 was a time of emotional transition. It was a time of releasing, um, letting go of hurts that were no longer a hurt. Only you knew it was a hurt. Only you thought it was. Letting go of hurts that you healed from, but didn't realize you'd healed from them. And it was an inner kind of emotional cleansing. Mm. You are feeling more balanced today um, than you have probably at any time since about your mid twenties and, and more secure. You will also be, if not already bonded, committed, with the being that you will, we would see that in um, latest 22, 2022. Uh, you'll see that at, at, at latest, the bonding with the person that you will believe is that soulmate life partner. Um, and, and, and you'll be correct, by the way. Bonded, do you mean? Bonded spiritually at the soul with your life mate, Soulmate. Now, that doesn't mean you don't know that person. It just means you haven't yet connected at the soul. Capable, but it just hasn't been fully committed yet, completed yet. You're, that would be in the process. You have, to be, you have to go to England. No, you don't have to go. You're, 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 you're going to be doing some broadcasts in England, and um, that would be in the spring of 2021. So, the, you know, in the spring this year. So before your next birthday, you'll, you'll have visited the, the, the United Kingdom. Um, and you'll look at Stonehenge, but you'll see other stuff too. And you'll be doing interviews and, and whatever. So what would you like to know about, by the way? And there's one other thing. One other thing. On your right side, lower left side, um, there's going to be some kind of dental work that needs to be adjusted. It might be a crown that needs to be reset or something that needs to be fixed. That's going to, next time you get to see the dentist. So, what would you like to know? Oh, I am also happy to tell you that at the ending of your existence, when you look at how much there is in the bank, you'll be really impressed. Um, and you didn't win a lottery. You made it all. Mm. Oh, I know why. I, I, you know, I wasn't like that prepared. Um, and, and, and by the way, um, you just entered into last, last October, it looks, is, is when you entered into either completed a contract or set up a situation that pretty much is going to guarantee you um, being more affluent than it will already be starting to show your, your income or your finances expanding even now. And um, that's the reason why at the ending of your life and it's you know, bad, like late eighties, maybe even nineties. And if you want, you can make it into your century mark if you wanted to do that too.
That's going to be a choice for you, by the way. And what the choice is going to be, am I producing? Am I contributing? As long as you believe that, you're, you're going to be walking, walking this planet. Yeah. And if my body is healthy, I mean, if I can <clears throat> move and operate with ease, that'll be well, that would be that would be the case. Um, you, you wouldn't that, that would be part of being alive that long. You, you would be active. Well, yes. So let's see. Part of me wants to talk about what you just said. Anything you want. This, I'm, I'm good. And there's after the show too, so. Uh -huh. Well, I'll just say, <laughs> and I'm, yes. there's a lot of accuracy here. 2017 was actually a traumatic experience, an ending of a 10-year relationship in a sort of traumatizing way. It necessitated tremendous change. So correct about all the emotions. Um, funny about the living situation. I just moved in with my boyfriend. And he keeps talking about things. That, what if we redid the kitchen? What if we knock this down? What, you know, he used to flip houses. Oh, right. So that feels really accurate. I want to say I have been to see the dentist. Okay. All right. And well, I already know two things that need taken care of. Um, okay. Yep. So I am aware. And... Uh, I love the money part and I love that I'm the one I always say self self is like contributing to your own resources. I love the idea of creating my own wealth and yes. my own sustainability consistently. That's so important to me. And I am starting to do, I've certainly done well before, but there's been an interesting pickup lately. Uh, very interesting that I've been watching and I'm really appreciating. Um, but I guess what I'd like to know, because you mentioned the 2022. There's also a possibility. Mm -hmm. You could be taking your show and it being on mainstream media. I as love well. that. Okay, you're not that far away. Mm -hmm. You know, like, I can't remember what I said about 2022. The information comes in and goes, and then I can't remember. So, so um, uh, anyway, you you could be doing mainstream media stuff. Full steam ahead. The 2022 was about being bonded to my soulmate. That's correct. Now, that you may know, be with, and interacting with the being that is your soulmate. You just haven't connected right yet at the soul. Okay, I see. It takes time for that to happen. So in essence, and, and the relationship you're in, there, there are no heartbreaks between now and 2022. So whatever you got going now um, is, is what will be, the relationship that you're in right now would, would be the person that you're with in 2022 and 2025. And, you know, as I said, you'll be, you know, you'll bond with your soulmate, you'll know it, and, you know, you'll believe it, and, and you will be correct. Mm. Wonderful. So I would love to know, because you've taught, I mean, with all the readings you've done, yes, I'm sure that you see patterns with people. I do. Right? That's one of my skills. I, I, can, see, I can see a person's pattern by a survey of one. Yeah, I see one behavior and I know it's a pattern. I Yes. So I'm curious about the prevalent issues that you see people have that you would like to bring up that could be actually corrected if they knew. Well, I bring it up and I tell them. A huge, well, when we are conceived from the moment of conception, or the moment that our unconscious mind starts to work. From that moment until we complete our life, our unconscious mind remembers everything. Everything that's ever occurred. And our unconscious mind's job is to keep us alive. That's, that's the unconscious mind's job. And, and it's, on, it's aware, it's turned on 24-7. And it's constantly comparing with what's going on with everything that's ever we've ever experienced. 
So from the moment that starts to work in us, we start being programmed by the environment that we're in. So when we're in our mother's womb, if our mother's being beaten, or if our mother's being adored, mm. those patterns start right. there. If our mothers are treating themselves well, mm. the pattern's there. If our mothers aren't, then the patterns are there. It's not because our mothers are good or bad. It, it just means that we come through there, from them, and with the relationship with their parents or the people around us, them. So when we were born, we already have patterns and behaviors. Depending on what those behaviors are or those patterns, um, and a lot of people get traumatized. I do a lot of work with people that are traumatized. Did I answer your question? I get too complicated. I get too weird. <laughs> it's not weird at all. But oh, okay. No, I, I Did I answer it? But it also sounds like it's really relevant to each person and you're willing to address it. Um, well, I do. So let me ask you this, because we're coming to the end. And I, I would love to know, for somebody like you, Yes. how do you... Okay, this just came in. So this is actually maybe very helpful to a lot of people. Because we started out this conversation, Robert, that you said, what a sensitive kid you were. Yes. So I know there's a lot of gifts or talents that come with that, because guess who else is very sensitive? But I also oh. know it comes with other things. Absolutely. Um, and so how, what do you do on a daily basis? What kind of process or ritual or practice do you do that keeps you really centered and in the, in the flow in a really good space? I've been in therapy for as long as I can remember. So, so I don't have mental problems for as long as I can remember. Looking after me is very important so that I can do my job. So it's very important that I'm constantly working on keeping myself balanced, clear, and healing all the things that have happened to me and happened with me. Uh, so I've, I'm, all my life, I've been in some kind of form of therapy. It's just, it's, it's my way of looking after me. That's great. Uh, so that's part of the training to being what I do. So, um, and then I also am physically active. Mm. So I walk about 8 to 12K a day, which is um, seven miles. Wow, that's great. Okay. Um, and, and I walk my dogs. Now, I don't do it like all in one shot. You know, I get up in the morning, take my dogs for a walk, and 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 um, it's it's then I do a lot of thinking, um, and and processing, and then I come back and 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 now I like to work every day. I like to do something psychic every day, so so um, most of the time I have appointments, and I prepare for each appointment. At, at before everyone comes, I smudge my environment. I mm -hmm. clean it. Um, I, I use oh my body just went from, um, holy wood, um, uh, Palo Santos uh, um, wood, and it's beautiful scent, beautiful cleanser. And, and I also use um, some sage as well. I burn that. And um, I, I, I prepare the environment for my client. Uh, when they leave at the end, I, I, I smudge it again, mm -hmm. uh, I clean it. Um, I often will reflect any stresses that I've had and release them. And, and that's pretty much what I do. And what are your next Dare to Dream? This is Dare to Dream. So what are your future dreams or goals? That I can continue working as long as my father has mm. and that I can continue to grow and evolve the way I have over the last while. Um, and that I continue to do my life's calling and give service. And That's you can find name. more out about him at rlmreadsyou.com. Again, the name of the book that features him is The Perfect Predator. Robert, thank you so much for coming on the show today. And thank you for that reading. I really appreciate it. Thank you. It.
been a joy. Thank you. I end the show with this quote from C. Joy Bell, which is, the only way that we can live is if we grow. The only way we can grow is if we change. The only way we can change is if we learn. The only way we can learn is if we are exposed. And the only way that we are exposed is if we throw ourselves into the open. Subscribe to the Dare to Dream podcast to hear this weekly number one transformation conversation. The next upcoming guest next week is Dr. Reverend Christopher Macklin. He's a very powerful channeler, medium, and healer who's going to be here from England, interesting enough. <laughs> that may be my connection to getting there. And he utilizes divine healing techniques. If you're enjoying this podcast and you like to see myself and my guest, you can go to youtube.com slash Debbie Dashinger and check us out. And please subscribe, leave us a five-star review because that's how other people find this very relevant conversation. Remember, don't just dare to dream, dare to turn all your dreams into your reality. Thanks for joining us today.